What's up, everybody? This is Asad. And I'm Jerick120 from How Do Disturb Reality. Uh, we're going to show you in this video a really cool move. It's a in the hands false riffle shuffle, and it's a gem. It looks exactly like what a real shuffle would look like. So uh, here's a, just a quick demo of what that would look like. This deck is in order. This deck, too. Brand new. And so um, let's give it a shuffle. Something like this. And then we can also follow up with uh, a cut. And in that process, not a single card uh, changes position. The deck is still exactly as it was a second ago. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. At the end of this, uh, Jarek is gonna show you a minor variation. All right, so let's get into how to do this shuffle. Now, before you learn this technique, you need to be very comfortable with the standard in the hands riffle shuffle. So I've made a controller for that a while back. So I'll put the link to it uh, up here on the screen and in the description box down below. All right, now assuming that you are good at that shuffle, here's what you're gonna do. Start off in exactly the same way. You're gonna do a, a, a standard riffle shuffle, but you wanna start off with your right hand cards, maybe one or two cards, three, it doesn't really matter so much, but start with the right hand. Do a shuffle, and you want to end with the left hand, okay, with the left hand card on top. You'll see why that's important in a second. And you're going to push the two packets in slightly, maybe about that much. That's like an inch, I guess. So up until this point, it's pretty much a normal riffle shuffle. Here's what happens next. The secret in this move is how you go about doing the bridge. So what's happening is you're applying pressure in a, a specific way so that when you do the bridge, it doesn't actually mix the cards completely together. I'll show, you, I'll show you what I mean. That might sound kind of confusing, but here's what happens when I do the bridge. I'll show you how to do this in a second. But when I do the bridge, you'll see that the two packets are actually still separated. All right, so we're going to be in this position right here. Now, here's how you're going to do the bridge so that those packets end up getting separated. It's, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky. This is the hardest part of the move. But uh, once you understand the, the pressures, it, it becomes pretty easy. So you're going to flex the cards as you normally would. But what's happening is you're flexing in a way so that you're, you're mainly applying pressure here and here. Okay, and one little trick that you can use to uh, help you understand how to apply this pressure is once you flex it, what you want to do is you want to try to connect your first finger, your right first finger, and your left pinky. They don't have to actually touch, but they should be going in each other's direction. Okay, that's how you want to think about the, the pressure that you're applying. If you do this in the right way, it should just work automatically. Let me give you this angle right here. Look, I'm applying that pressure right now, so when the cards bridge, it, it just works, really. And you'll see that all of those cards are separated. Now, depending on how much pressure you apply, you know, that's going to um, change how much the side jog is. So at the beginning, you probably want to side jog the cards a whole bunch. That's going to make things a little bit easier on you. But as you practice more and more, you'll be able to reduce that side jog and still have the desired effect. Okay, here's another way of thinking about it that, that works pretty well. You're kind of twisting the packets. So your right hand cards, you're kind of twisting outwards away from you. And then left hand cards you're kind of twisting inwards towards yourself think about it that way and that will cause the cards to separate it's something you're just gonna have to play around with really but if you try different things you'll, you'll see it work once you're here you're gonna end in this position now you'll notice from this angle you can't see these cards so you're gonna angle slightly upwards and you have both of your hands like this so that side jog pack is completely invisible from here, what you're going to do is you're going to transfer into a billow grip, okay? So I'm rotating the cards, uh, what is that, counterclockwise. So you go from here to here, okay? From the front, the side jog cards cannot be seen because they're being covered by the right hand fingers. Now this is an exaggerated side jog. You, would, you probably wouldn't side jog it that much in a real life performance. I'm just kind of showing you what happens. Uh, you can start out with a side jog that much, but once you get here, what you would want to do is you're going to push the cards flush to some extent. Not completely, but maybe like an inch, two inch. I usually end here. And then what I do is I actually, I, 
when I push the cards flush, I only do it at the top edge. Okay, so this side jog actually becomes more of an angle jog, kind of, okay? And that helps because the front edge looks pretty normal. The back edge, there's still a pretty big separation there. Now here's what happens. Under the guise of giving the deck a complete cut, what's actually happening is you are separating all of these side jog cards from the pack like this. So my pinky goes right where the cards are side jogged. I'm doing an undercut basically. I'm simulating an undercut. My first finger, my left first finger goes where the cards are angle jogged on the uh, outer end of the deck, just like that. So it's kind of a straddle grip. And then the right thumb is gonna be at the left inner edge of, of the pack. Okay, so it shouldn't be contacting any of the side jogged cards. It needs to be clear of that. So from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swivel all the cards that are straddled by your left hand fingers outwards. Okay, so they're gonna go out just a little bit. That's gonna help separate it. And then at that point, you're gonna completely clear all of the cards. You wanna hold the cards kind of loose at this point because you don't want too much friction between the cards. That's gonna make it difficult to separate. So have a very loose grip at this point and those cards will kind of just ease out of the pack. They come out here, and then you're gonna to pretend to be doing an undercut. And that's the end of the shuffle. The cards are in complete order, okay? Now, that, that last part where you strip out the cards, it's a bit tricky. You wanna do that without hesitation, ideally. At the beginning, there is gonna be hesitation, but after you practice it, it should happen in a smooth, and um, in a nice way. So you go to the middle grip, you square up the cards a little bit, that's where you do the angle jog, and then separate, dump the cards back on top. Now there are some variations on this last step. The step where you're separating the cards and doing a cut, uh, I prefer to do this undercut method, but uh, Jared is gonna show you an alternate method that you might prefer. So this is the technique that I learned. So just as a sod taught with the whole riffle, right ending with the left, bow those cards, have them get out jog. And you're turning to the side, but instead of grabbing the left packet, you're gonna grab the right packet and put the left hand underneath uh, for the build grip. And your hand will be covering that side. And then from there, all you're doing is swiveling out that entire packet and it looks pretty smooth. Swivel in that and just drop it right on top and, uh, and it's clean. And from the front, it looks fair. Pretty quick, quickly paced move and just like that. And uh, I like it. I'm a fan. All right, everyone. I uh, hope you like that move. Practice it a lot. It's going to serve you really well. Uh, before you leave, make sure you check out Jarek 120s YouTube channel, How to Disturb Reality. He's got a lot of really good performances, tutorials, inspirational stuff, and uh, check it out. Yeah, it was fun. And subscribe. Thanks for watching, you guys. See ya.